What's up guys? <clears throat> My name is Jorgen Dahl. I'm the co-owner of River Brothers Outfitters and uh, the biggest thing here is we want to do a little introduction for myself and Devin is the other co-owner for River Brothers Outfitters and we're going to do a little recap of the 2019 bow opener in Minnesota. What do we got going on here, Dev? Well, so I uh, shot a cap off a bottle about a month ago. Second shot, because I'm not lucky. And Blake's going to challenge me on it right now. So. How far of a shot was it when you did it? Uh, first shot was about 15, and I was obviously clearly high. Second shot backed up about 20... 20 yards and smoked her. He smoked her? So we're gonna we're gonna drop that film like right now yep. and to show it the proof. <laughs> so like what? Yeah baby! Yeah you gotta take Miss? Yeah. I gotta hang a little right. Woo! Woo -hoo! Didn't close. <laughs> oh! Like one. Up, I didn't boys. get to shoot my second arrow, but you guys will see it coming here. <laughs> Congrats, Blake. Yeah, You're the kind of king of ball cops right Hoyt. now. <laughs> it's that Hoyt, man. Oh, here we go, the Hoyt. Hoyt versus Matthews all day. <laughs> all day. Yeah, we four, yep. and then he hit cornhole. Yep. Right? But every morning that it was... 60 or below. Yep. He was, he was here first. From he was coming up. The left at that Y. He was coming on the left yeah, side. He was, he was coming, this, he was coming yeah. this way, but it doesn't matter. Either way, he could be coming from here and he just circles around the tree. Right. So I think even if he bet, even even if he bets over here, as long as we aren't in, as long as we don't have intrusion here or here, we're going to kill him. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I've got the trail marked where we parked for sunset, too, so if I make it there. Yeah. That's map Oh, yeah. let me see. Yeah, he's hard on Yeah, I saw it. I was like, dude, that thing is so wide. I didn't know yeah, if it was just the angle or what. AKA Brock. Who's got Stormy on? Earthy. Stormy? Right. <laughs> Stormy Daniels. Is that the name That's of that? Quad. Uh, There's Stormy. Which so, one is Stormy? So here we got Stormy oh, Daniels. Oh, There's Quad. The deer. Stormy the deer. Ooh. There's Quad. <laughs> Quad's still in velvet. This one's still in velvet here. <laughs> See, you gotta get some new rims out there. Filming this? Get some fuels. Oh. That, that one, this is Quad. He's been on camera for two and a half years, and he's still in velvet as of yesterday. <laughs> Uh. All right, so we've got opening day here in southeastern Minnesota, uh, September 14th. Got in the stand about a half an hour before light, got everything set up. Uh, I've seen two bucks, one shooter. It's probably 150s, 160s. Uh, 
are still we're in a citadel for probably 30 more minutes every day that moose has came through this corridor it's been this temperature really light wind um, and he's going in between bedding areas so we're trying to catch him here if not hopefully this afternoon or tomorrow stay tuned I just freaking ten ring that through. She is down right here. I heard her hit the ground. It is 5:38. I've been in here since two o'clock, and I'll be honest, I've been going nuts. I've been so freaking bored. But opening day, one doe down. Uh, a lot more to go. But. Uh, I'll have to text the fellas and let them know, but I'll take a look at it, that shot. But yeah, one go down. So I have uh, farms in southeastern Minnesota. That's where all of us were. There's about seven of us in the woods. So we got about a thousand acres down there that we've managed for about the last 11 years, um, managed heavily with food plots, trail systems, different stands, making sure that those deer have the nutrients to be able to grow the antler size, be able to live healthy lives, and then for us as conservationists, be able to manage those bucks properly and the herd size for does, for uh, the bucks, for everything across the board. Making sure that they have water, making sure they have the food, making sure they have the bedding and all that. Uh, just so you guys know, we're all self-filming our hunts. This is our first year of really focusing on self-filming our hunts. So um, kind of bear with us throughout the season. We'll do our best to get the interactions throughout the hunt and do all that. This, uh, this weekend, I thought we did a fair job after... Fat Bob came through, I wasn't able to do a post interview, and so this is where this comes in. So throughout the weekend, there's probably 15 different uh, buck encounters, uh, aging from two years old all the way to about five, and then there was our one of our big target bucks, nicknamed Moose. So we've been chasing Moose for about four years now. We've had him on camera for four set of years, hundreds of photos. Um, last season there was six to seven encounters. I had one really good encounter with him, but he got chased off. So this past weekend I had one that we called uh, Fat Bob come in. So he came straight down uh, the trail. The trail kind of wraps right in front of the stand and then he came straight in. But when he came in, so there was a four point that came in right before him and the four point comes in, um, super excited to see him. Prior to that, I had a three and a half year old eight point that was hanging out behind the stand for probably half an hour. Got some cell phone footage of him because I wasn't able to turn the camera. So that four point came in, started to make a scrape and I was watching him, started filming him and I looked up and coming on that trail, uh, going left to right in front of me, 
dark horn big body deer first initial reaction was moose flip that camera right to where he was going to come up so there's a tree that you'll see that's directly in front of me from my viewpoint and so right away you can't see this deer and so i could see the edge of his antler and i go to grab my bow and i'm still thinking that it's moose and throughout that time of him standing behind i got a confirmation that it wasn't him and that i was fat bob and so then for me i had to decide okay a is this deer mature enough old enough and is he in the class that we want to be able to take on the farm and during this i think he was in there for about five five minutes in the food plot in front of me and behind me i decided to pass on this deer so exciting time my heart was pumping my i was just on the wall about this deer on if i should take him there's actually a moment during filming that you'll see that the camera goes against the tree i thought i had turned it all the way to him and i was full drown on fat bob and decided to pass on this deer and i think it was a good pass i think we give him one more year so he's able to grow to his full potential maybe two but overall you know it was a great great weekend uh, Gertis, one of our buddies down there, Eric Gertis, he missed a really nice 10, happened to hit a twig, bounced right over his back, it was a clean mess. There's no footage from there, but we can definitely show you some trail camera photos from that. And um, Jake Grata, he was sitting up from me about 500 yards on the bluff, and had, he was full drawn on Fat Bob too, and also decided to pass on him. So overall, it was a great weekend, guys. I really hope that you guys are able to follow along through this season. Uh, we're going to continue to push out content to YouTube and Instagram. And then uh, hopefully you guys can follow along for a couple of uh, the great journeys. And hopefully we can document uh, Moose when we get a chance at him. Stay tuned. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the like. Go follow us on Instagram. Talk with you soon.